I should have the vending machines just downstairs because my legs are a little tired right now. I did a half marathon last night for training, which was a lot of fun. That stopped nice. So stairs are a little slower today, but that's okay. I've got four and a half weeks to the actual marathon. Let's see how it goes. All right. So we had mostly finished up types. Right, um, so I think we're on schedule here. I want to talk the last little bit of types, 
here from chapter three, and then talk about project zero, our first project. Right? And again, they're zero based, but it'll make more sense later. Um, actually, no, we, we talked about lists, and their first index is zero. We did that. I'm doing a lot of things, friends. Doing a lot of things. So if your first index is zero all the time, project zero, ha ha ha, you know, in, the, in your list of projects, that's the first one. Um, I guess it's not all that interesting. So, a question? So, the quiz set on Canvas, mm -hmm. is that on our own or is it during the class? Oh, just take take any time during the week. Oh. Yep. So on your own. Sorry. Um, yeah. So each each week we'll do a chapter quiz. Um, it's more points for reading the book, essentially. Um, you get points for doing the side book. You get points for taking the quizzes. These ones have due dates. The side book does not. Um, so generally, you'll probably keep up with the reading at least well enough to do the quizzes, and they're not timed. You can open them, you can close them, you can come back to them, you can save your progress. So if you want to look at the questions first and then do the reading, awesome. Some people like to do it that way. Um, have at it. So this hopefully is your incentive to keep up, um, for, for lack of a better term here. So, all right. Um, let me fire up my term here. So we've looked at lists, we've looked at sets, we've looked at tuples or tuples, we've looked at dictionaries. We had all sorts of fun with our types here, interacting with them. And, and there's more to it, we're just sort of uh, getting started with them. But these are, are the basic types, let me zoom in a little bit here. Uh, Joy had a great birthday, by the way. Thanks everyone for wishing her a happy birthday. Um, we got her her own bottle of wine. Uh, she was super excited and she's like, this doesn't taste good. <laughs> Like, sorry, kid. <laughs> what do you want? So, it was like the Arbor Mist fruity stuff too. Just so, like, doesn't get much sweeter than that. So, uh, A2, Wahoo. Uh, so I keep track of the Zybooks progression. At the end of the semester, I will go through and look at the completion number and throw in whatever your percent complete is out of 100 into your score here. I could look at it every week, but that's a lot of work I don't want to do. And you're already having quizzes, so hopefully you're keeping up with it here. Uh, I, I strongly recommend you don't. Oh, I clicked the wrong button. Well, that sucks. Okay, I will go back to YouTube um, and fix that. I will edit that out. I apologize. That was dumb. It's, assignments is what I wanted. That was the right button. Yep, this one here is the right button. Let me add myself a note. Fix stupid thing. At 12.36. Okay. All right. Generally, I'm a little smarter. I'm a little tired. Yeah. So they should be. Let's take a look. Learn. I opened up some of them. I don't think I did all of them in three. No, they, so I, I'm opening them as we go. Uh, yeah. So um, in like two, I didn't. Oh, I didn't open all of them. In one, yeah, I didn't do all of them in one because there's just a bunch of them. Uh, they're, so if it, they're not accessible, just don't worry about it. Um, they won't they won't count for or against you or anything. Um, I'll double check that, but I, um, if they're hidden, they shouldn't be scored for sure. Um, does it still show it? Is it like not done for you? <laughs> all right, okay. <sighs> Come on. Scroll. Where's the sweet spot for scrolling? There it goes. Unused. Do I really have to drag all of these? Unused. All right, well, this is not entertaining here, uh, but I will make sure to remove the ones that you don't need to do. Because, um, yeah, that's dumb. Sorry about that. Thank you for telling me. That would have been unfortunate. Come on. Come on. Okay. This... Why is this not scrolling? Additional labs. Okay, if the whole section is hidden, it should not show up, I think. Almost there. 
unused. And what's the other one in here? It's fine. Thank you for telling me that. Okay, so now your percentage should look a lot better there uh, when we look at those labs. Thank you. Good question. Okay. And save. It's a cool tool. It, it, it really is, but that's annoying. All right, so we got through our common data types summary, right? Looking at our sequence types where order matters, looking at sets where there's just a collection, looking at dictionaries, and then again, strings, ints, and floats are our, our usual types uh, that we're working with. So converting between types, um, we've done some of our basic conversions with int, float, and strings. Right, working with those, I don't think there's anything new here. Binary numbers we talked a little bit about. We looked at this, this idea that it's base 2, everything is stored in binary eventually. We just put them all together to make bytes, a bunch of bytes. Uh, take up more and more space. So looking at those is fun. Their website's nice, but I like that programming calculator. Works out a little nicer. Um, you can actually like click the little bits on and off and have all sorts of fun with it. But binary numbers are great. Uh, string formatting is very common. And this will be nice when we deal with outputs that need to look a certain way, um, especially for our first project where we're going to pretend we're going to have dollars and cents and charge people pennies, which I think they've been talking about getting rid of the penny like for about as long as I've been alive and it still hasn't happened. So maybe in your lifetime, they'll get rid of the penny. So we don't need to be carrying around pennies and dealing with pennies. Um, sure, it's a penny, but um, I feel like it just adds all sorts of logistical nightmares to stores and that sort of thing. Um, so if you want a nice formatted string, so let's uh, add it to the bottom. We can just run the individual ones here. So if I were to have something like a price, so let's have um, let's get your Starbucks order here. Although I've got a, a local coffee shop, I've been hitting a lot more than Starbucks lately. Um, it's a good thing, right? You want to support small businesses because the evil Starbucks Corporation or some something like that. I don't know. Um, so if we want to get their order, so we'll say your order is going to be um, an input of input. What is your usual Starbucks order? Okay. And then we'll know that, and then we should get the price, right? The price is going to be in probably a float, right? Because there are probably some pennies here of an input of how much does that cost? Right. And then we can display it. Again, not anything super interesting, but if we had like, let's add some tax, maybe we can add some tax. So we'll we'll print out here um, it costs, and then uh, we don't need our space here. So price times 1.06, right? To that, our Michigan sales tax here um, with tax for a order, or maybe item. I don't know. How about item? Item. Okay, so we can print that out. So I'm gonna just run just these ones here. I'm so excited I can run just three lines. That was the coolest thing. Um, need to give away some more bonus points. So I would get a empty flat white with three extra, no, four, I think it's four, extra espresso shots, espresso shots. And how much does that cost? Well, I usually only do that when I get a free drink because those extra espresso shots really add up. But usually, I think if you don't, it's like 9.50 or something crazy. So with tax, 10.07 with tax for a venti flat white with four extra espresso shots. It's basically eight shots of espresso and some milk. Um, that thing will keep you going. So that, that was my usual order. Um, and they have the app where like you can order again. So we were, we were going somewhere, I think we are going to the zoo. <clears throat> and I asked my wife, hey, can we, Thing by Starbucks because I wanted to get a coffee. She's like, okay, yeah, you want your regular with a bunch of extra shots? I was like, yeah, the regular with some extra shots. I you know, get the free, free drink, whatever. But in the app, they, they order again. Already knew it had some extra shots. So she added four more extra shots to that. So I had 12 shots of espresso and like a splash of milk for to take to the zoo. That was a great zoo trip. It was awesome. <laughs> had a lot of fun walking around the zoo there. Um, it was good. It was good. 12 shots of espresso, yeah. 
um, eventually you get kind of acclimated to that amount of caffeine. Like you can keep increasing your dose. It's like any other drug. Um, you kind of get used to it and you just have to up and up and up it. It's just socially acceptable. Right? If someone says they have a caffeine habit, no one's like, oh, you have a problem. They're like, oh, okay, you're an adult. <laughs> yeah, you don't sleep much. Go for it. Um, so, cool. We, we, we figured that one out here. Not too bad. Um, not the prettiest looking stuff. And then having to comma separate all this is a, a little bit annoying here. So it'd be nicer if there's a better way. And turns out, yes, there is a better way. Who knew? So we can print a formatted string instead. So for a formatted string, you put an F in front to say, hey, Python, I want to format this string. And with a formatted string, you can just put everything you want in a block of, or in a set of quotes here. So we have it costs. And then if you want a variable or arithmetic, you use curly braces. We use curly braces for all sorts of silly things, not just dictionaries. I don't know why, I'm sorry. Uh, but it's not a dictionary here. It's just a substitution. So anytime Python sees curly braces, it says, oh, you want to do something and turn it into a string. So we can have price times 1.06 inside the set of curly braces with tax for A. Or if you just give it a variable item, it will say, oh, let me turn that into a string and put it in here for you. Now, this is a little easier to type, um, generally a little easier to follow. You don't have to do your comma separated things and worry about your spacing. Um, it's just going to come out what it looks like here. But anywhere it sees the curly braces, it will give you that result. Now, if you actually want to print curly braces, I think you have to do the escaped curly braces. Is that it? Escaped curly brace? Or is it two curly braces? I've, wow. There's a way to do it. I don't remember what it is off the top of my head. We almost never print curly braces, so it's probably not much of a problem. All right, I gotta Google that now. Um, rat string with curly braces in string. I print a literal curly brace. Okay, you just you do just double them up. Okay, there we go. Just double them up. Yeah. So I wanted an opening one. Oh my goodness. All right, that's fine. We we don't need to print them here. And we can run. We can see we get the same output because it is awesome. So, so I'm not going to type all that out. We'll just hit flat white here for the usual one is what was like 550 or something, and we get the exact same looking output, which is what you'd expect. So just a nicer way of going about it. Now the other th cool thing you can do with formatted strings is you can start doing some number formatting. The number formatting in strings is nuts here, and there's a bunch of things that happen with number formatting. Look at all this. Wow. Those are fun. So the format specifier. You add a colon, and then you add what the specifier is. So if you want it to be formatted as a string, you can add string, but that's the default. It assumes everything's a string. Again, it gets weird here, but if you want integers, you use D for decimal, but it doesn't have a decimal point. I didn't make it up, I'm sorry. Um, F for floating point numbers, or fixed point notation. So F if you want decimal places, D if you don't want decimal places, I don't know why, just go look it up. Uh, it's not, not anything super crazy. You can get specifically exponential notation. Cool, that's fun. Um, you can get turned right into binary for you. That's really, that'll really confuse people. You go through and print a bunch of binary numbers. Um, I've told you before, and I'm sure you're not surprised I'm a big nerd or geek or anything you want to call me here. Uh, well, my parents are too, so it's probably their fault. Um, but when I was a kid, I learned how to play racquetball with my mother because she was a fan of racquetball. And because it amused her, she would keep score in binary. And that, that's a vivid memory I have as a kid of her shouting out, like, 1100 for scores. I don't know why. Um, but... You can write numbers out in binary really easily. It'll do all the conversion for you. But what we mostly care about here is our 
floating point numbers, fixed point notation, floats here with some amount of precision. So it will round for you, which is usually pretty good. Right? So if I want two decimal places explicitly, I can say colon 0.2f. That's the whole thing we want here. So if I want to have just two decimal places as a floating point number, fixed point notation, I can do the rounding here that I can't really do up here. Not, not too big of a deal with our, our arithmetic that's happening here. Um, but if I were to run this again here, and we'll say, oh, I didn't want to run all of it. That was wrong. Just wanted to run these couple lines. There we go. We'll run our couple lines here for a flat white. Now, if that was like 4.99 here, I'm going to get it costs. Sure, Starbucks will ask me for that much money, and my eyes will roll back in my head, and I won't know what to do, and I'll probably just give them 29 cents. Or we could just round it here and say, hey, that's 29 cents. So being able to round in the little formatted string is super handy. Now we might actually want to round it here if we're going to add up for someone's receipt. Um, but I think you'd have to buy like a thousand of those before not rounding it would really matter. And then you'd be off by a penny. And if you're buying a thousand drinks from Starbucks, you probably don't care if they charge you an extra penny or not. Is that, is that fair to say? So, yes, um, that's fine. And there are cool things in the math library to do rounding. Talk about the math library a little bit. You can just do round using the math library as well. All right. So this is just a formatted rounding here. It still calculates this number behind the scenes correctly. Or I don't even know if that is correct. Um, that, that level of math hurts my head. I don't want to do it. Pretty sure probably just ended here, right? That's probably right. So computers are actually awful at getting very precise floating point numbers. And that's a whole other topic. Um, and that that's probably gets more into the electrical engineering side of things and how processors work and all that fun stuff. But um, yeah, so we, we don't need that much precision here. And this is probably enough. Did I show you that NASA article about pi, by the way? Oh, that's super cool. Um, so the jet motion lab, motion lab, how many digits of pi? Then this one it? No, that's not the article. Yeah, this one here. How many decimals of pi do we really need from the Jet Propulsion Lab at NASA? And you know, some people know a lot of digits of pi and they have it in their head. At one point, I think I knew like 20 digits because I was amused by that as a kid. Um, was never useful, but there's all sorts of silly stuff that ends up in your head. Um, but for Voyager 1, going about 12.5 billion miles away, um, using pi to the 15th decimal place, right? you could be off by about 1.5 inches going 12.5 billion miles away with only 15 decimal places of pi. That's pretty good, right? Pretty accurate. Um, and I feel like no one actually understands the physics well enough to make sure that like the gravity of things they pass doesn't take you off by another inch or two, but maybe some people are that smart. Um, I don't know how they calculate all that stuff. It's that, that just, that hurts my head to think about like gravity pulling you off track as you're going certain ways in space and then knowing when things rotate um, and, I don't know. Physics seems, seems really interesting, astrophysics, but um, way over my head, way over my head. Um, so with 15 decimal places of pi, you'd be off by the size of a molecule. Okay. I, that's really small, right? I feel like that's really, really small. So anyway, precision-wise, we're probably okay without all of those extra decimal places. And they're hard to calculate anyway. Um, there are specific libraries you can use if you need really precise calculations that are not floating point numbers. You'll use those specific libraries to do very, very, very precise math. Um, for our purposes, we just chalk it up as a rounding error, and that's fine. Um, it, it's not going to matter. Hey, Smile, thanks so much. Appreciate you. i got to remember to keep watching chat. I will get used to this. Uh, it's not like I haven't been doing it forever, but 
Um, and it's not my usual setup. My, my home office setup is so much nicer. But that's okay. It is nice to see you folks. I do, I do appreciate that. Um, all right, so our formatted strings, right? Any sorts of cool notations you want to use, great. It'll format for you. All right, that was it for three. We didn't have too much extra there. Uh, not, not too bad. So let's talk about the project. Okay. So let's go to the right spot here now. Goodness. Project zero. So this will be due in two weeks before class starts. So that puts us at um, about 12.30. The idea here is when class starts, I'll go over my solution to it. Generally, fine people appreciate that and don't think it's a big waste of time because programming is as much of an art as it is a science. So there are so many different ways you could go about solving a problem and get to the same solution. And that's fine. It, you know, if your code works, it works. That, that's all we really care about for this class. Um, you get working code. It's definitely the goal. Um, whether or not it's pretty, that's another story, but that's, that's going to take some practice here. right? <clears throat> so we'll just work on function over form, and then I'm going to assume that form will come to you the more you practice. Uh, but we only have so much time in the class, a lot of content to cover, so I'm not going to spend any time on your form. I might make fun of it and leave you a comment like, <laughs> that was really ugly. Probably not, because that's a little bit mean. But like point out, hey, you, maybe this could have been better. But that's okay. Um, so I'll go over my solutions. I didn't mean the publish button. That's okay. It's empty now. Um, so let me go to my classrooms link, make a new repository for you. So again, everything will be its own repository here, just to keep things organized, uh, makes life easy here. You'll have a bunch of folders in your GitHub folder. It's not too big of a deal. So we want our um, templates. Awesome. Okay, so here is our link. No details were provided, yes, of course. So let's please submit the URL to your main PY file. Then you'll turn in that URL. All right, awesome, got a due date. So we're gonna build a, a little storefront here. And we're gonna try and keep uh, track of a couple things. So it's gonna have the part where we build the store, and it's gonna have the part where we sell the things at our store. Okay, so um, it, it's all the same program though, because we don't really have ways to store that information yet. We'll get there to where we can store the information so when it's not running, it's not gone. But we just, we're not there yet, and that's okay. So part one, um, building the store. So we're going to ask the user to enter the name, price, and quantity of, we'll say, five items that they are, they are going to sell. So five times, we'll ask them for the name, we'll ask them for the price, we'll ask them for the quantity. Right, figure out what things we're going to sell. So if you want to run a coffee shop, then you can run a coffee shop. If you want to run a hot dog stand, you can run a hot dog stand. Right? If you want to sell school supplies, sell school supplies. It, like, the, that part doesn't matter. It's whatever the user enters here. Okay. So this will build out. Um, you're going to want a dictionary here for this. Right, so we're going to uh, be adding the items to a dictionary. Use the item name as the key. Right, so the key of the item name, we'll put it in. So the items should be unique. You probably aren't going to sell five coffees. Right, I mean, you can come up with fancy names for them and sell them five different ways, but it's all basically coffee. But that's okay. You'll have five unique names, essentially. Now, the value associated gets to be a little tricky if we want price and quantity. Because right? you can only have one value associated with a key. But what you could do is you could have another dictionary and use key of price and key of quantity. Or you could just use a list and say, hey, the first thing is going to be the price, the second thing is going to be the quantity, if you wanted. Any way you want to go about it, it's okay. Um, no big, no big, uh, um, can't talk, friends. Um, both ways will get the job done. 
whichever way you want to go about it's fine. So then the associated value needs to be something that can store price and quantity. Okay. Now, as we start selling things, we need to start reducing the quantity. We don't have ways yet, we're going to get to those next week, to figure out whether or not you actually can sell something. Like if you run out of it, for now that's okay. So next week we'll get to how we can deal with not selling an item we don't have. And it won't be too hard to add, I promise. So we haven't gotten to everything you need yet to finish this. We'll get to that next week. Um, but most people don't finish this the first couple of days. Is that okay to, to have something we won't get to yet? All right. You're not, not upset with me? That's good. Okay. So building out our store. Name, price, quantity for five things we're going to sell. Add them to the dictionary. Use the item name as the key. Right? Just that string value. Perfectly fine. And then if we're going to be dealing with price and quantity as numeric values, make sure we're converting. Right? Most of the time, price will probably be a float. Right? If you want to be a very progressive store and say, hey, I only deal with whole numbers, great. Uh, you'll have to figure out how to deal with taxes later because uh, Uncle Sam always wants their cut. Right? Or I guess that's uh, Aunt Michigan right? for sales tax. There's no federal income tax, federal sales tax yet. So I don't know. And that's not the feds. So it's not Uncle Sam. Is that how that works? I feel like that's how it works. Uh, but then quantity then is probably an integer, right? Unless you're selling something like, um, I don't know, candy by the pound, you're probably dealing with whole numbers. So ints are fine. Again, if you want to sell candy by the pound and say, hey, you want to buy five and a half pounds of gummy worms? Fantastic. I don't recommend you leave them in the car if it gets warm out in the sun because your gummy worms will melt into a single giant gummy. Don't ask me how I know. Um, it happens. It happens. Yeah. Um, and then, like, trying to share that with your kids, be like, hey, you know, I have a bunch of kids. Here, you want some gummy worms? And I take out one giant chunk. Like, all right, let's just start ripping here now. Good job. Here, go, go gum on it. It's real chewy, too. Um, so, probably floats for price, probably integers for quantities. If you want to do it different, go for it. Um, what I like to do with projects is try and make them open to your interpretation. Some people get really frustrated by that, uh, so I'll apologize now. If you're the, the type A kind of person who, like, tell me exactly what I need to do, this is what, kind of why I'm talking about it, right? Here, here's some specific details if you want to go about it this way. Um, if you want to have a little bit of fun with it, I love that. Um, and that's the kind of thing that's really interesting and fun sometimes when you're, when you're writing code is you might have ideas and things you want to try and, and go silly directions with it. And you should be able to do that. That's perfectly fine. Um, I will be able to read your code. I can pretty much guarantee it. I've been doing it for lots of years. I'll probably figure out what's going on when I run your program. And it'll be okay. Um, I had like one time someone just went totally above and beyond. And I, I got confused by like what they were trying to do because it was like so far off the original topic. But it was fine. It worked out. So any way you want to go about that, fantastic. Right? Probably floats, probably integers. Okay. Um, so then part two is selling stuff. Okay, so we're going to ask the user five times, what do they want to buy? We're going to ask the user five times, what do they want to buy and how many, right? Uh, and actually, before we start that, so we're going to ask the user how much money they have in their wallet. We'll ask them, hey, how much money do you have in your in your wallet, in your pocket, in your purse? Right? How much how, how much money do they have? There we go. We'll be less specific here. Okay. And then five times, what do they want to buy, and how many? We're going to calculate the total cost and subtract it from the money they have. If they don't have enough money, have enough money, tell them no. Uh, we are not giving out free loans, opening a tab for people. You pay for it or you don't get the item. We'll just make life simple here. Right? Again, this part we'll get to next week. Um, another like note inside of a note. Get to that next week. Or in week four, right? In week four. Okay. If they do buy it then, we'll assume they bought it here. Then we need to 
reduce the quantity in our item dictionary. Okay. If we don't have enough items, have enough quantity, also tell them no. Right. Uh, I wish we could sell things that we didn't have, like infinite money there, by selling products you don't own. Unfortunately, that's probably illegal. Um, right. Yeah, probably is. Uh, don't quote me on that. I'm not, not much of a legal scholar. but uh, I don't recommend you go around selling things you don't own. Is that what drop shippers do? And then they just go buy it, or do they have to like buy a quantity first and then sell what they have on hand? So, like a third party. Yeah, yeah. So, you, but usually, aren't you buying like a larger quantity of it uh, in bulk, or you just buy one for one and it resell? Or they just put the order through to the other? Okay. Interesting. Interesting. I, I get ads for like, hey, here's how you can start drop, drop shipping. Like, this doesn't sound suspicious at all. They're like, make so much money. Look how much money I made. If you made so much money, why are you trying to sell me something? <laughs> like, I don't know. Um, the internet is a weird place. It's a very weird place. I've always been suspicious of that. Like, Someone has a technique that makes them lots of money and they want to sell you their technique. That's how they're making their money. <laughs> Selling their technique, not actually using this. So um, anyway, we'll reduce the quantity of the item in our dictionary. Okay. Um, we also need to track. So while they're buying items, we're going to track the cheapest item they bought and the most expensive item they bought and the total amount spent. Lots of different ways of going about this here. Okay. One way is gonna be really, really, really fast, and other ways not so fast, but that's okay. Um, any way you get the job done is fine. Don't worry too much about that here. Um, so there are ways to do this with stuff we've learned now, and there's ways to do it with stuff we're gonna learn next week. Both will work. Um, so e either way you want to go about that, yeah. Um, so I, I, let's go with like total for that particular order. So order number one, if I bought a hundred of a really cheap thing, that's going to cost a lot versus one of a moderately priced thing. Yep. So the the most expensive will be like the hundred of the thing I bought. Yep. That's a good question. Um, item. Uh, they bought like per order. Is that okay? Um, we should add the per order total. Per order total. Now, if they didn't buy it, it doesn't count. If we didn't sell it, it doesn't count. Okay. And then when they're done, done buying items, display the uh, receipt. Uh, most expensive item, cheapest item, and total cost, and money remaining. Then we'll also then display, so this is like for the person buying it, and we'll also display what's left in the store. Right? So for the person running the store, hey, here's your new quantities. Oh, good news, you sold a bunch. Now you only have three coffees left. Probably need to go order some more coffees, that sort of thing. Okay. Yeah. By display the receipt, do you want every item and then show the item? Yeah, so this is every, every item purchased. Or items, right? Purchased. Okay. How do you folks feel? Doable? It's not too crazy, right? We're still getting started. This is like our third week of programming here. Um, we're going to start. I'm going to say it might feel slow. It might feel really fast for you too, and that's okay. Um, but this is 
our pace we're going to start with. And, and things will get bigger as we go, but we only have so many tools in our toolkit. Right? So as we learn more things, we get to do more interesting things. So we'll, we'll get to some other fun stuff um, as we go. With programming, it's not exactly like math, but similar to math, where you don't get to forget the things you've done before. Right? You never get to get rid of arithmetic or forget arithmetic because you're going to use that everywhere. So the tools that we're going to learn are like that. They're like the building blocks. So we're going to keep using lists and dictionaries and strings and floats and integers and inputs and doing all those sorts of things in every project because they're just how we deal with our data here. So, and that, that's similar, like basically all the content from this semester is just foundational building blocks that you're going to use everywhere in Python. Okay. Next semester, if you do continue on the, the 2001 class, we learn some more specialty things that are like, here's a really cool tool for this particular use, but you're not going to use it all the time. We, we kind of go beyond those basic building blocks into some specialty use cases. Um, but for this stuff, it's just going to build on it. Okay. So generally with the projects here, each project is going to be worth more points than the last one. So this one's worth 10. The next one's probably 12. The next one after that's probably 14. The one after that's probably 16. So if you don't do so well in the first project, like it, it's not weighted as heavily as the later ones. Um, just to, you know, keep that in mind. And then we need to add a rubric here. So let me save this and go back and add our rubric. Where's my button for that? Oh my goodness. I know how this works. <laughs> Where's my option here? Rubric. Really? I thought there was a button right in here. But okay, sure, we'll go over to rubrics then. We'll add a rubric. So this is for project zero. Okay, so generally, if it's complete, you get the points. And if it's missing or incomplete, you don't get the points. So, and there, there's like a range of completeness. Like if it sort of works, uh, I'm happy to give some partial points there. So like fully works, incomplete, full points, doesn't do anything at all, no points here, okay? So uh, I wanted two windows here, that's okay. So part one, building the store, uh, creates a dictionary of items for sale with uh, item name, key, quantity, and price as associated values. Associated values somehow. Associated? Thank you, spell check. Okay. Two points for getting that dictionary. Right. That's part one. Just fill it out the store. So if that's all you have, there's two points. Right? If you don't have this, it's really hard to do like selling of items. So sometimes the partial points are weird here. Like if you don't have this, you can't really get any of the other points because it just won't work at all. Is that, is that fair? So like it's kind of dependent, but Okay, and then part two, uh, this is asks the user to buy items five times. So just asking them, right, this is the uh, name and quantity, is some points here. Two points for that one. And then part two, ensuring they have enough money to buy the items and ensuring there is the quantity available is two more points. So if you don't do any of that checking, that's fine. It's just two points off, right? And some of this might be useful as you go and start solving it, right? Um, it it's a little overwhelming sometimes and harder to take a really big problem and just start. But if you build out a little bit at a time, like, okay, let's just build out a store. Let me just do this part here. Great. Okay. Now let me ask them five times to buy something. Great. Now let me go and check and actually make sure they have enough money for this thing. We do that next, right? Kind of take it piece by piece by piece, step by step by step. You don't have to solve it all at once, right? And so that, that's sort of a nice way to tackle the problem. Yeah. Can you ask them how much they first? Yeah. So there's no points for asking that. Like that's part of this, making sure they have enough money to buy them. Yeah. So if you don't know how much money they have, you can't check for that. Yeah. All right. And then um, part two, tracking. Cheapest, most expensive. Uh, we'll just the output receipt output, right? So that included 
the Ernestinance. <laughs> uh, uh, so this was all items bought. This was the cheapest, the most expensive. Why is cheapest a word, but like expensivest is not a word? I don't know. All right, sorry. Um, cheapest, because he wouldn't say the most cheap, right? Isn't that, that's wrong, because you can say cheapest. You can say the least expensive item. Okay. What about costliest? The costliest item? But there's no, like, least... I don't know. Words are hard. Words are hard. I'm sorry. Um, so all of them is about the cheapest, the most expensive, the total, and remaining money. Okay, two points for printing out that receipt for them. And, hey, by the way, this is the cheapest thing you bought, most expensive thing you bought. Um, this stuff gets tracked, by the way, way more often than you might realize at stores. Like, are people buying cheap things, are buying expensive things? Do you buy expensive things and, and for individual items and, and all sorts of fun profiling of data um, that we can do to enhance your sales experience, I think is how they, they, they call it here. Um, and you will get very targeted ads from places that you shop based on your buying habits. So and that, that's sort of fun here. Um, and then the last bit then is, I guess it's really like part three or something, display remaining quantities in the store. Let them know if they need to reorder anything. So, all right, customer came, they bought a bunch of stuff, here's what's left. You might want to reorder some stuff. That's, we don't need to like go tell them any of that. So we'll have that as the rubric. I guess I should show rubrics then. And then I need to attach that rubric. I really thought it was like a one-click thing. Why am I not? Points online. It's 10. My friends, I'm so confused. I swear I've been able to use Canvas before. Why do I not have... Why is there no rubric option here? Is the rubric? All right, I don't know why I'm so confused. Um, I, but that's the rubric. I'll attach it at some point once I figure out why I don't have that button. Yeah. All right, I'm just going to double check. Alignment, more options. Can I do it here? Points. All right, I, I will go ask the Canvas people because there used to be like a button for that. So. Uh, I'll post a quiz for chapter three tonight. Yeah, that's my to do's. Three quiz. Don't forget the chapter two quiz is due tonight, 11.59 p.m. Right. Open notes, open book, open internet, not open neighbor, please. Right. And they're not hard. Right. You, you don't need to go ask your neighbor these. Right. I promise. They're not hard. Um, just do the reading. They're the free points for you. Um, and we'll kind of keep that flow as we go. Um, and then... We can come back next week and start on some new stuff after that. So for lab next week, uh, Monday labs are weird because they're after the Monday class. Um, we'll probably get into dictionaries and branching. And then some branching and, and I don't, I, I don't not, not loving the Monday between lectures for lab time, but it's, uh, we'll make it work. We'll make it work. Okay. Thoughts, questions, concerns? Okay, you know what we're working on. Uh, if you haven't gotten the lab done yet, right, that's a good thing to get done too. Um, and then if you have questions about the project, please shoot them my way. As you saw, I just wrote it. So it might be nonsensical the next time you go look at it. Uh, we kind of talked our way through it. Uh, so if it's something doesn't make sense to you, please ask. I'm sure it won't make sense to someone else either. So it'll just be helpful to clarify whatever that happens to be. Uh, we can go from there. All right. Thanks, everybody. I think that's all we got today.